Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through how you can connect a phone site's funnel over to Zapier. That way you can set up some uh, automation. Uh, maybe you're using something like Chirp or Chirply or um, you're using Active Campaign or, or something else in FusionSoft. But maybe you're struggling to try to get that data to, to go through to that third-party platform. Um, maybe something you're overlooking is that sometimes you need to set up intermediary steps to reformat the data so that way it will match exactly what that other CRM or email marketing platform is looking for. Um, so you might have to dig into their documentation. Uh, you can look into their documentation on Zapier's website as well as their own website. Try to figure out what it is that they, they need in terms of formatting for data. Uh, sometimes you just have to play around with it a little bit to try to figure out exactly what's going to work if you can't find it in the documentation. You can always reach out to their support team and try to find out. You can reach out to us as well and see if we know. Um, now, I'm going to dive into an example here really quickly. Let's connect this phone site's funnel over to Zapier via a webhook and then reformat the data a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, in Zapier, I'm going to go ahead and open up. Uh, let's go ahead and make a Zapier real quick. I'm going to create a webhook. All right, so let's go ahead and search for, actually, I don't even have to search here in the, the search bar uh, for my Zap because it's right here. These are the most recent uh, options I might have been using. Um, actually, I haven't been using some of these, so I think it just randomly populated some stuff up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into webhooks by Zapier. And then under trigger event, I'm gonna select, search and select, I'm gonna select catch hook. And then let's click continue here. And then I'm just going to click right here where it says copy. That's going to copy this URL here. I don't even have to go in and highlight or anything. It just gives me the option to copy. So once I've got that copied, let's go back over to phone sites here. And I'm going to go into the settings tab for this first uh, page here. So let's go into settings. And let's scroll down to the post webhook option. So let's put that in there. Let's click on save and then uh, I need to submit some sample data through here, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And for this sample, I want to point out one thing real quick. Uh, I'm putting in a first and last name in here. I could put in here three or four different names. Let's do that. Uh, let's, let's put in like middle name test and then second middle name test. And then last name. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you a really cool tool called Formatter where we can split out those names because maybe your CRM needs to have a first name and a last name. Maybe there's an option in there to collect first, middle, and last. But at the very least, you want to get both the first and last split. Now, yeah, you could change your phone site's funnel to have two different fields, one be first name, one being last name. But if you want to just use the default field, that's in phone sites that collects a full name, and then we can split that up in um, Zapier and then send that off to your, your uh, CRM. We can do that really easily. This also allows you to personalize any of the email follow-up that you're sending out to where you can put in like the subject or the body of the email you could call out their first name. So like for example, in phone sites, when you're using our follow-up, you put in curly brackets, uh, you know, like F name for first name, and it's going to pre-populate the, the follow-up with the first name. You can probably do something like that in your CRM or your email marketing system as well. You just got to find out exactly how they want to be able to pull in that, that merge field, I guess you could call it, for their name. So let's go ahead and put in a uh, phone number in here. So I'm going to put in, um, let's put one, two, two, three, three, and then one, two, three, four. Fake number, number of course, and then let's put in here help at fake phone sites .com, fake email address and let's click on sign me up for instant access and that redirects me over to this thank you page here with the video so let's go back um, so you can see I already I did that after I put in that webhook we want to make um, want to make sure that we have that webhook in here and have that saved that way back over in Zapier uh, we can now pull in that sample data that I just put through this funnel. So let's go and click on continue and click on test trigger. Now, if I had not sent out that sample information through the phone sites funnel, I wouldn't get anything here on this page after I test the trigger, but you can see Zapier is happy. It's congratulating me saying we found a request and you can see right here, here's where I gave uh, that fake uh, lead information through. So I need that to be able to populate the rest of these uh, action steps that we're setting up in our Zap. 
So if you get to this step and it fails, probably need to go back in your funnel and resubmit that data through and then go back through and try the trigger step again. So let's go ahead and click on continue. Now here's where I want to find the next step, which in this case, I'm going to use a formatter to be able to format this data properly. Um, in a subsequent step down further in my entire Zap chain, that's where I put up, uh, that's why I put an action step for sending it over to Infusionsoft or sending it over to Chirp or you know, some other software platform to be able to send out follow-up information. So let's go ahead and use, you can see over here off to the side, uh, Zapier now includes off to the side of these, these options uh, that are often overlooked by folks that don't even know what these are, but these are powerful tools. You want to invest a little bit of time to figure out how these can help you make the best use of Zapier. So in this case, I want to use the format step. And the action event that I want to use in here, there's a bunch. You need to look and see what you've got available to you. But I'm going to use the text option. Each one of these has even more options. So for the text option here, I can click on continue. I'm going to get asked um, how I want to transform this text information. Do I want to capitalize letters? Do I want to convert HTML to Markdown? I'm guessing most of you probably heard anything like that. Are you extracting an email address? Like, is there like a sentence of information and we're trying to find an email address out of that information and pull it out? Um, are we trying to extract a phone number out and reformat that? There's a whole bunch of different stuff you can do in here. In this case, I want to extract those, uh, those names, right? I want to create them in, in different rows, essentially, so I can use a first name and then map that to a first name field in a CRM, last name, map that to a last name field in a CRM. So in this case, I'm going to search for split text. I actually want to put in here into the input field. I want to put in the, the value that I'm actually splitting up. So this is going to be from a previous step. You're always going to be using data from a previous step in your Zap. So in this case, I want to find the name field because that's what I'm splitting up here. So let's click into the name field here. Now in the separator field, this is where I want to identify what should be separating this data. In this case, it's going to be a space. Um, if it was like a pipe symbol, so that's the pipe symbol right there. It's right up above the return or enter key on your keyboard. If it was like a comma, um, if it was like a, a tilde or, or something else, uh, that wasn't the tilde, if it was like a tilde, I could use that to split up my text, but in this case, it's the space. So I, I can't type in space here because that's not going to be sufficient. Um, any other character I could put in, I could type that in directly from my keyboard. But what Zapier wants for um, looking for a, a space as a separator, as you can see right here where it says character or word separator to split the text on. Default space. So in this case, I want to use that. I'm not going to type that out. I'm just going to copy that directly. And then I'm just going to paste that right in there. So now Zapier is going to use what I just pasted in there and look for actual spaces in the, uh, the value that we have up here in the input. And then it's going to split it up. Okay, and if you're not quite sure, if you need to learn a little bit more about what I'm saying, if it doesn't really make sense, click through here to this link and, and learn a little bit more about how to use different characters or different strings of characters like I have right here to try to separate that, that data. So now I'm gonna click into segment index. What this is, this is gonna identify how do I want my output, okay? In this case, I could just ask for the first output, so like the first name. I could ask for like the last name, if that's all I wanted. In this case, I want all of them, but I want them split out into separate fields. And this will be, this make a little bit more sense as we get to the next step. So let's click into all as separate fields, click into continue, and then click into test and review. So you can see where I put in, uh, back in phone sites, I put in like Chris middle name test, second middle name test, and then last name test. Now it's split it out into four different rows. You can see right there, item one, item two, item three, item four. So now in the next step, so if it was like the, the CRM step, uh, that's where I could map item one to the first name, item four to last name. So let's do that real quick. So let's go ahead and click in this little plus sign. And in this case, let's just pick an app real quick that I was working on for someone else. And just bear with me here real quick while I set up this next step. Okay, phone number. So this would have been from the catch hook. This is from that first step. This is our web hook. So we put in the phone number, that's what came through from phone sites. Uh, email ID, that's gonna be from that catch hook as well. Okay, now here's where we're using that formatter information. So for first name, I'm gonna use, and this is that formatter step, the text step. You can see right here, show all options. So now we can put in here item one. So that's gonna be our first name, last name. It's gonna be item four. 
And again, like if this application here, Chirply, if it had asked for first name and middle name, last name, then I could put in a middle name. Most apps aren't really going to ask for that, so I don't have to really worry about that too much. Uh, I didn't collect any of this additional information here, but if I click into continue here, and then if I hit test and review, and then it would go through and that should do it. That should be everything that we need for this particular uh, setup for this zap. The only other ste step that would need to be done is name my zap. You always want to give it a name that makes sense. So like if I wanted to call it the name of this funnel, I would just copy that. And then I sometimes will put in there like the name of the applications that are used. That way it makes sense to me six months down the road if I ever need to, to check. It's easier to see it from the dashboard page, it, just to have a better sense of what a zap pertains to. And then the last step is you just got to turn this on. And then once you got that turned on, I would go back to that original funnel and then submit yet another uh, lead through. I would send it with a, a new name, a new phone number, and a new uh, email address just to make sure everything goes back through to your last step. And then um, check to see that any of the follow-up automation that you have set up in that last step, make sure that it comes through properly. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know.